Welcome to Candid Chats on Cancer. I'm Mary Robinson. And I'm Jamie Moore. Mary, who are we chatting with today? We are chatting with Carrie Jensen, and she's actually a friend that I met in 2014 through a Time to Heal class that we okay. had talked about in another yeah, yeah. episode. Mm -hmm. And so, how have you been? And can you tell us a little bit about your diagnosis and all that? Yeah, you and, bet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I was diagnosed in 2009, and I had uh, follicular lymphoma is what it's called. So, it's a non-Hodgkin's follicular lymphoma. Okay, can you break that one down yeah, for yes, us? Yes, I okay. can. So, I think that follicular really just means it's a slow grower. Okay. Uh, oh. Which is really great news. Uh, the other side of that is I was sick for a long time before they actually diagnosed and found what it was. Mm -hmm. So when they did find it, it was in my abdomen behind my organs, which a lot of people who have a, a, a lymphoma, it might be a lymph node in the neck or in the armpit, uh, something that will pop out, but mine was behind my organs in the abdomen, okay. in my heart, my bone marrow, and my liver. So I was pretty sick by the time that they found it. Uh, but the good news is, because it's a slow grower, it did respond very well to the chemotherapy that I had. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so how did they find it, since it is slow growing? It was, you know. Well, I will tell you, I had to advocate a lot for myself right. uh, in the process of discovering what it was. Uh, I did have a, a couple of doctors tell me that there was nothing wrong with me to go seek psychiatric help, which was really interesting. So yeah. advocating for myself and finally saying there is something really wrong with me. So a CAT scan uh, did show the growths mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately some blood work came back and then that led to the biopsy which led to the diagnosis. Yeah, I think you bring up a really great point that you know our emotions sometimes tell us long before that we actually see the signs and symptoms. In fact, you had anxiety coming before you got diagnosed. I had depression. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, I just told my wife one day, I don't, you know, I didn't have anything to be depressed about. My practice was going well. I had just given a successful lecture. Um, and we were sitting on the back porch on the most beautiful day, and I went, I just feel depressed. Mm -hmm. And I was just anxious about everything, meaning that, you know, I felt like my life was chaotic. And I know I have four children and whatnot, but I was just you know, crabby and mm -hmm. tired. And then I thought, what is going on? Am I crazy? But I think exactly. it was just my body telling me I was sick. Right, and so my job had me, I was driving a lot for my job. They actually called me the I-80 road warrior. <laughs> I did a lot of time between here and North Platte, Nebraska. And I would be so fatigued, and that's a little different than tired, right. but I would have to pull over at rest areas or in a, in a Walmart parking lot off of the interstate where there were bright lights so that I could take a nap. Yeah. It was a, a very interesting level of tired. And then getting home from being on the road and being, uh, I would sit still for five minutes and be completely asleep in the chair. Oh, and wow. I'm a mom, so I just figured, you know, I have four kids and I figured, oh, I have a very busy job and I'm traveling all the time and I've got these kids. And when I was away from home, I, I did work probably 18, 20 hours a day because what else am I going to do? Yeah. So I could blame it on a lot of things until I couldn't blame it on a lot of things anymore. Right. What, what made the doctors finally check you out again? Because you had said they, <laughs> they said that it was in your head, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I switched doctors. I switched doctors two times before I, I landed on one. And I, I actually said, I'm not leaving here until you figure out what is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I really meant that. I, I knew something was really wrong. And then I have a really great friend who works at Nebraska Medicine and she knew that I hadn't been feeling well and she made some calls. She called some friends mm -hmm. and called in a couple of favors and I was able to get into some really fantastic doctors cool. at the Med Center who listened and uh, didn't write me off. Right. And they really started digging and looking and I'm, I'm really glad that they did. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so what kind of testing did they do? You got MRIs, CAT scans? Lab? Well, you know, the joy thing is I had to start off with a colonoscopy and an oh, endoscopy. Yes. Those are those so are fun. <laughs> yeah, we had to rule out some other no things. Fun. <laughs> yeah, not really a lot of fun. But we had to rule out some other things before we could really right. get into the, the need to cut me open and biopsy because that's a big deal. It's a right. surgery. Um, and some blood work came back. Mostly the blood work, though, was was pretty good. Okay. Uh, it's when the platelets started dropping off. With lymphoma, that's one of the indicators that uh, there might be a problem. Is right. when platelets start dipping and white blood counts, you know, go high. So your platelet count, why does that drop when, when you get a oh, lymphoma? Oh geez, I don't know. I, I just think that it's part of the, the lymphoma, the blood cancer, it just yeah. isn't able to produce what it's supposed to produce and uh, that's one of the, one of the indicators. 
still to this day when I have my cancer checkups, we do oh, those like blood your counts. Platelets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what other testing did you have after the colonoscopy? Because we all know how That's a dream. Sure those preps are. That's a they? great time. Uh, they ended up doing that, that CAT scan and comparing it to a couple of CAT scans I'd had before. And then those were worrisome, the lymph nodes that were so big. The three biggest, one was the size of a softball, one was a baseball, and one was in between. So those were the three largest. And our lymph nodes should be the size of our thumbnail. Okay. So they shouldn't be that big. Mm -hmm. And that led them down the path of, we need to do a biopsy. Mm -hmm. So we scheduled the biopsy. I had to wait till my son played in the state baseball tournament in 2009, you know, in Lincoln, the Cornhusker State Games, which we won. Uh, um, oh, yeah. have your priorities <laughs> I had to wait, you know, <laughs> being a mom was first for me. Oh, that's yes. right. And then I had the surgery on a Monday and it was diagnosed on July 22nd, about 10 after one in the afternoon. You never forget those right. benchmarks. Yeah. Uh, it was also my anniversary at my company. <laughs> I've been oh, at my company no. for four years. Yeah. And uh, they were really great during the whole, the whole fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you had something different with yours, right? After you did the chemo and you, did you have radiation too? No, or? thank goodness I did not have to okay. have radiation. So we did the six rounds of the chemo R-CHOP. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that all stands for. R stands for rituximab and P stands for prednisone and all the stuff in between does amazing stuff like yeah. kill the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I, uh, I had two years of maintenance drugs and it was uh, the rituximab every other month for two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. But didn't that do something to your immune system? Yeah, so there's a, now we know more that there's a little bit of a risk uh, with that rituximab that I think might be showing its face a little bit more often, especially in patients who are younger because my, my lymphoma, follicular lymphoma, tends to be diagnosed in people who are older. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a risk of losing your immune system. And you know, I right. know we talked about the risks when we're talking about doing chemo, but all I was hearing was, you have cancer, we found cancer, it's right. cancer. And you probably just wanted it out. Oh, get yeah. it out. Get do, it out. I don't care what we have to do. Yes. I don't, I, whatever the side effects are, yes. whatever. Yep. Uh, I, I, and I know I, I know I heard, I know I had to have heard that because it's, it, it's common mm -hmm. uh, in the language to talk about right. all of these side effects. But now, uh, in the studies that are being done, I, I work with a guy who had the exact same cancer, and he has the same thing. His, his immune system has also been wiped out. So I don't have an immune system anymore. But luckily, someone was smart enough to discover something called IVIG. So right. I have IVIG uh, every four weeks. So my counts go up, and then they go down. It's a bell curve. So it helps me stay healthy and be able to fight off things like a cold. Mm -hmm. um, I did have influenza A, which was terrifying this past January. Yes, because I did healthy too. people were dying. So you know what I'm talking about. I it's lost uh, over 10 pounds in less than like four or five days. My son came home from college for Christmas. And he brought it. Yep, mm -hmm. that was my Christmas Great present gift. that year. Yeah, Great God. gifts. Wow. It, was, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful <laughs> gift, actually. Um, when you had to go through the chemo, you mm -hmm. had only you had six rounds, mm -hmm. and then you went on an oral medication. Then no, it was a so the rituximab was also delivered uh, intravenously. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right after I ended chemo, which uh, my last chemo was November twenty seventh of two thousand and nine, I said you got to you got to get rid of this port because I feel like I'm waiting for cancer right. mm -hmm. to come back. It's mm -hmm. got to go, and it was a little wonky and it felt weird and, and it hurt, so I wanted it out. So we decided with this IV uh, medicine, we would just use my veins. Well, chemo burns your veins up. Yeah, quickly. I wish I would have thought, of, I should have listened to my husband and he will love to hear me say that. I should have listened to him. <laughs> he'll have to watch the yeah, show. Yeah, he'll have to watch it. He'll be like, yeah, I well, told you. A husband, right? Yeah, There's but a new I one? mean, it doesn't happen very often. Nope. So <laughs> I'll give him that. Uh, so I did have to do it in my veins. And each time I did it, it did get a little bit harder yeah. because oh, the veins sure. were yeah. you know, a little little shot. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way about my port. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, it's mine's up in my left hand shoulder here. Now as I'm gaining weight and I'm working out, well, I'm now growing in the chest area. Well, I didn't realize, but the skin's got to grow over that port too. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit of pain yeah. going on, but you know, and every six weeks you have to go in and have it flushed. Yeah. You know, like today I had to go in and have mine, mine flushed this morning, which is really kind of nice. It's five minutes in and out of the office mm -hmm. and you get to see uh, the wonderful nurses and you know, the people that take, you know, that take care of us. And so it's kind of like a nice little visit for me, but you're right, you know, I 
you roll over and you hit it, mm -hmm. or my seatbelt is the worst for me. So I, I with my IVIG, I go, I still go to the cancer center every four weeks, and I have it done there. Okay. Uh, one of the volunteers came in, and, and uh, she, one of my friends was there, and of course we're yucking it up because why not? And uh, she asked me if I'd if I'd heard of a pillow port. Yes, and they I said, make those. I didn't even know about a pillow port. Yeah. So I have a port again. I had it put in in this side for the IVIG, uh -huh. and I said, put that puppy in there. So this thing is in there really deep. It is deep into my muscle. Really? So you bet. And it takes a one inch needle to access it every time. But so when I'm a passenger, my seatbelt bothers me. I just got a pillow port, and I haven't been a passenger since I got it, but I can't wait to try that thing out. No kidding me. Yeah. Do you have one? You, no. You, don't you have need one? to get one. Oh, Jamie, I'll get you one. <laughs> I'm actually going there tomorrow. So are you? Yeah, I will get you one because there are volunteers that make them for yes. people that have those. I didn't have a port. I had a pick line, mm -hmm. and we had to get it flushed out every week if if I wasn't right. getting anything, but pick lines are for uh, people mostly with leukemia mm -hmm. so that when you're done with your treatments, you can take the pick line out. It's just in your arm and it goes all the way to your heart, you know, mm -hmm. close to your heart like your guys's does, but um, it's more temporary versus your, not permanent, but you know, yeah. yours is um, just different than mine. That's a you probably yeah. know way more about it than I do, except I was able to get mine out when we were done with treatments. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, and I figure if I have to do this every four weeks for the rest of my life, it's easier to just have a port. Oh, oh exactly. My, yeah. Exactly. And you are in remission. Yes. I mean, just so yes. we know. Yes. yes, yes, I'm in remission. So my tumors are still there. They're not making me sick. And okay. that's the key. Um, my bone marrow is clean, which that's really that's great, too. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So do you have to have bone marrow biopsies? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Good. I was just wondering since no, you mentioned the bone No, two in my life, that was enough. Oh, yeah, I've had a few of those. Yeah. They are no fun. Oh, no. no Sedation, fun. that's the key. Yeah. To that yeah. boy. Good so and sedation. I see that your hair is short, so I had to ask her when she came. Now, because I was like, I thought you were in remission, but she's loving the fun, the fun yes. look of this. So, so one of the most beautiful things about losing all of my hair, anyway, uh, because it wasn't easy at first. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned that I can really pull off and rock a bald head if I need to. <laughs> yeah, uh, my head is perfectly round, which who would have known? <laughs> and I can wear short hair. Now I did grow it out after I was all done. Yeah. And go it out to my shoulders. I did that too the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, that was fun. Now let's cut this off again. So I just <laughs> kept going shorter and shorter and shorter. Uh, <laughs> I, and it's easy. I actually was rocking a faux hawk for about a year. I actually just started doing it back How into a pixie. Cool. Oh, it was so fun. Oh, and, 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 and it's you always say a different you color. Your oh my gosh. Yes. When you have short hair, like this is what you get to do: change your color. Now, Jamie, I'm having thoughts again about my hair. <laughs> we'll see. I was, uh, oh. I was like bleach blonde <laughs> until I did this color. That is fun. Oh, it's that so fun. fun. It'll be brown. I've yeah. done dark reds, burgundies, whatever. I was going to ask you because we were talking a couple of weeks ago about how the hair comes in, it comes in more more curly, yeah. and she was hoping hers would come in what strawberry blonde yeah, or something like that. I was hoping like to that. be a redhead, redhead, you know, fire red. Well, yeah. okay, so the last. So time now we know you can. You can do whatever you want. I've got a great color. color. Yeah. <laughs> She's know, fantastic. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, when I did the when I did the blonde, well, I'm really fair skinned anyway, and my eyebrows never really came back it, it went that right. great. They're real thin and they're white. Like my mm -hmm. hair is white. Uh, yeah. My hair did come back darker and curlier. So now we have to bleach it and make it blonde. So when I was the blonde the last time, people at work were like, "You look like sunshine." Aww. Yeah. So Aww, when I come with thread, I go, "Well, sometimes I'm sunshine and sometimes I'm fire." So <laughs> what do you know? Sunset. Yeah, I love it. It's That's fun. Great. It's fun. So your lack of energy and your hair loss, did that make you, how did that make you feel, I guess, when you were going through the treatments and whatnot? Well, you know, I thought about the hair, the hair falling out a lot because that was, I had such cute hair. <laughs> I did. I loved my hair. It was so cute. And, and I, probably not unlike a lot of women, I right. thought that my hair was, you know, part of my personality. And when you see someone, you know, you look at you look at those kinds of features and in my head I was right. thinking I'm losing my hair and this is a huge part of me and what are my kids gonna think? You know, they're gonna look at me and, and I might freak them out, I might freak their friends out because my kids were kind of young when I was diagnosed and thinking about it and uh, blogging about it and just contemplating the day that I was going to get my hair shaved because that's, you know, that was the recommendation. Right. It was falling out. We cut it really short anyway, but it was falling out all over the place and it's a mess. That's what I had to do too. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, the, I've come to understand that when I lost my hair, it wasn't really so much about the hair. Right. Mm -hmm. It was the fact I was not going to be able to deny that I, that I was sick. 
that I, I couldn't say I have cancer. I could not, I couldn't utter those words. I could say they found cancer after a couple of weeks. I just couldn't say I have cancer. Mm -hmm. well, when I lost my hair, I couldn't fake it. I couldn't deny it. I had to accept it. And I'm a really positive person anyway, and for some reason, that that signified something so much bigger than my looks changing. Right. Yeah. And my kids were awesome. They were really awesome. I have a picture of me in my, my son's aviator sunglasses, and we first cut my hair into a, a mohawk, and it was, it was <laughs> something to be I loved. It was fantastic. But the picture, I know that I was fighting back tears because I was just so freaked out. Right. Uh, and, and still not really fully understanding or recognizing the significance that I had to admit I was sick. Yep. Uh, but then we, we shaved it all the way down and I thought about it and I took a selfie. They weren't called selfies then, I don't think, uh, maybe in 2009, but I whatever. Know. I took a picture of myself and I posted it with my buzzed head on Facebook and I said, here I am. And I had to accept. That gives me goosebumps. Well, I just had to accept it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't as awful as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, and then when it was squeaky bald, I did not wear a wig to work. I did wear a wig to work. I didn't wear a wig anywhere else. Right. The only place I wore it was work because I thought people would be freaked out by a bald chick because, you know, <laughs> it's a little weird, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but my kids really embraced it and did a great job. And mm -hmm. these days, I got friends of mine that don't even have cancer that shave their head mm -hmm. because they want to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, you know, you still kind of get looked at when you go into the grocery store, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But these days, it's a little more fashionable actually to yeah. be bald as a woman so that's pretty lucky yeah, yeah exactly. I think of eyelashes when I lost my eyelashes that was harder for me than right. losing my hair getting ready for a game in September a football game and putting on mascara which I have done you know the majority of my life and yeah. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like how am I, do I keep getting this mascara on the bottom part of my eye and <laughs> and wiping it off with the makeup wipes and leaning in and then I realized I I had sticks for eyelashes. I know, I remember, well, you come, you, the reason why I'm <laughs> laughing is because my husband made fun of me one day because I was putting on mascara and I literally had like a hair here and a hair there <laughs> and that's it. And I said, you know what? It makes me feel pretty. Just yeah, leave me just alone. Just leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> just leave it alone. So. We, when we were rolling into October when I was, you know, at the prime of, 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 my, of my cancer treatment. Yeah. So I'm bald. My eyes are kind of sunken in because, you know, chemo yeah. makes you feel like crap. Yeah. Yeah. And I, my skin didn't look good and um, I didn't have eyelashes or eyebrows I totally looked like uh, what's the guy from um, uh, cousin it no uh, oh night court or something like no, or, no, no. Uh, Adam's family the Adam's family that yes. guy with the light bulb in his yeah. mouth I can't remember his name <laughs> uncle uncle, uncle Fester. Fester. Yes. Yeah, yeah yeah so I looked like him so for Halloween we were going to get one of those <laughs> light bulbs that light up and we were gonna go trick-or-treating with the kids but I ended up with a fever and I couldn't go oh but Aww. it was a great idea yeah because I really looked like him I actually have pictures side by side of me looking just like him oh that's that would be funny. great yeah you got to find humor so with kids you, you were diagnosed and your kids are young is there how did you do all that? Handle being a mom, mm -hmm. a wife, well, a person with cancer? Great support system. Hands down, that's the best. So I did call my pediatrician right after I learned that I had cancer. I said, I don't know how to do this. How I don't know how to tell my kids. How old are your kids? Well, now they're 26, 20, 19, and 18. So this is nine years ago. You know, yeah. they, were, they were younger. Yeah. And my son, my oldest son was at a family reunion with his dad and my pediatrician said, I'll tell you this, you can't lie to your kids because they are smart mm -hmm. and they right. will figure this out. So my husband, we sat the three kids on the floor and, and he said, uh, well, we found out what's wrong with your mom because I had surgery. So I was in the hospital for a week before I came home and then we had to tell the kids that uh, what was wrong with me. And they were little, so Ryan is 20 now, so what was he, 11? Uh, so they were nine, 10 and 11 mm -hmm. or eight, nine and 11, 10 and 11. And uh, my husband said, so they're gonna do chemotherapy and Ryan's eyes just became as big as saucers. And he said, that's for cancer. I thought, right. how do you know that? You little kid, how do you know that? And I thought, oh boy, she was right. We definitely cannot lie. Yeah. Then we had a friend of our family's uh, that he said his mother died of leukemia when he was quite young and they didn't, they didn't tell him. They weren't, they weren't honest with him about mm -hmm. it. She was sick and then she was gone. Yeah. And he said, don't do that to your kids. So we had open conversations about it. Uh, we had amazing friends. 
we had a we had a barbecue shortly after I was diagnosed, and I couldn't believe all the friends that came and. Like they wanted to clean my toilet, and I was like, I don't want anybody cleaning my toilet. That's weird. Uh, they, and our kids were active in sports, so yeah. they wanted to run our kids around for us, and it was really humbling yeah. to accept that help. But what I came to understand in this whole journey is that's how my friends and family felt like they were part of my fight. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they I want to help. Right. I knew what to do. I knew to go get chemo, and I knew that I'm not going to feel good, and that was my job. My husband's job was to cook and clean and take care of the kids and be the coach of all the athlete, athletic things that he did. And uh, my friends' jobs were to run my kids around, bring us meals, clean my toilets, <laughs> you know, fold my towels. Yeah. You know, I mean, it took so many people to help in the process. Mm -hmm. But it was not just me alone. There were a lot of people, a lot of people in my life, work, family, friends. We were very, very fortunate. And I think that support system is huge with anybody yeah. going through this mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it just lets you know you're not alone mm -hmm. and it alleviates some of that stress that's unneeded, right. you know, because you know that people are taking care of things that you normally do mm -hmm. and don't have the strength to do yet right uh, at that moment. Yeah, the, the fatigue that you experience as you get more and more chemo in your body, it right. is just incredible. And I had a friend that would drive me to work because chemo brain's real, as you both know. Yeah, very uh -huh. real. Uh, very, very real. And what? Yeah. <laughs> Where did I park? Oh. <laughs> she would pick me up and drive me to work and drop me off outside of the building and uh, pick me up outside of work so that I didn't have to walk yeah. the two and a half oh, blocks to the office. Oh, that's so nice. There were days when I didn't even know if I could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I worked. I worked the whole See, time. See, I didn't work the whole time because mm -hmm. I could not be, my immune system well, was yeah. compromised, so yeah. I couldn't be around people. And I'm a teacher, so you oh, have all those German. children. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, I know Jamie worked. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> I had a nurse that was working with me, and she would literally send me home during, during the day. And she would pick me up at the, I only lived like two blocks from my office. And so I used to walk every day until I got really knee deep into chemo and like you said you just get so fatigued mm -hmm. but she would come pick me up she would bring me home for lunch oh, uh, and nice. then she'd make me stay at home and go all right I've got the clinic for the rest of the day you and she would uh, uh, her name is Brenda is one of the most amazing support systems I could have ever hoped for and she just showed up at my door one day God must have known yeah, yeah. absolutely oh. so what made you stay positive throughout all of this then you know, I've kind of looked at this as I, I really had two choices and I had to simplify it that much. And I had either the opportunity to fight or lay down and die. That simple, get up and fight or lay down and die. Well, I wasn't gonna lay down and die. I was 38 years old, four awesome kids, not doing that. Yeah. So when, to me, in my brain, I, I made it that simple. And I don't know, I tend to look at everything uh, in a very positive way anyway. I may not ever know why this was my journey. Right. And that's okay. I don't necessarily need to know why it was my journey. The gifts that I got in this journey and, the, and that my family got in this journey, I would never trade them for anything. I don't want cancer back, right. but I would never trade looking at things differently, like really truly what is important and where do I want to spend my time and my energy. And you know, uh, somebody cutting me off on the way to work is not that big of a deal. You know, where yeah. it, it, might, it may have been pre-cancer. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just you learn to um, not take for granted the yeah. the things, and you have a different perspective on life. Completely you know, different. I yeah. like I used to look at my children and be like, oh, I you know I never took the time to watch them on the swing at, outside right. our door, you know, or outside the window because I was busy doing stuff. Well, oh, now yeah. I take the time to do things like that, or. If they say, Mom, I want to tell you about my day, I, I take the time to listen. Now, sometimes I have to finish something. I mean, you know, like, right. like other parents have to do too, but it's just really nice to not lose that perspective. Yes. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, in some, some ways, I'm, I'm sad that it took cancer to, to get me there, uh, but at the same time, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. Right. I wasn't maybe the most understanding person before, I, well, that's not true. I've always been an understanding person, but uh, my mom got diagnosed with cancer after after I had cancer, and she died in 2012. And oh. she, her battle was very short, four months, um, small cell lung cancer. Oh. And had I not had the experience of being absolutely beyond sick from chemo, 
I never would have appreciated or understood that she really was that sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I would have been like, come on, mom, toughen up, get up. Because that's how we were as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And instead I could say, you know what, it's okay that you can't eat this food that you can smell because it's making you sick. Yeah. I understand. Because I understand. I don't know that I could have done that, yeah. that kind of empathy before. It's a, it's a whole new level agree. of empathy that, you know, we're just never taught until you thrown into that situation. You know, I've been a nurse for almost most of my life, 40 years on coming up now. And I was always on the other side of the bed, and it was, you know, now I understand what it's like to be inside the bed. So we can I wrap this up in a little bit. Is yeah. there anything you would like to tell everybody out there? Uh, eat dessert first. <laughs> <laughs> eat dessert first, <laughs> indulge. <laughs> Take the time to let other people help you if you're in a cancer battle. I think that's very, very important. Yes. Um, it's not like they're feeling sorry for us. It's how they're feeling like they're part of it to at least help us in some regard. Mm -hmm. uh, slow down, yeah. enjoy the little things. Um, Smell the roses. Oh, absolutely. It's so easy to get caught back into the busyness of life. Oh, it is. Very easy. So sometimes I even have to remind myself to slow down. Yeah, well, the further, the further away I get, the harder it is sometimes to remember that. So then I get to do things like this that causes me to remember. Thank you. Mm. And Carrie, thank, thank you so for much for being here. Such an honor. On our thank show. you for asking me. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. And I hope everybody comes and joins us again on Candid Cats for Chan or <laughs> Candid Chats for Cancer. <laughs> we'll, we'll be chatting with you guys on the next episode. Y'all have fun. Have a nice yeah. one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>